Hello and thank you for joining us on Law Life Applicating Word, the Thursday edition. Here we are. Praise the Lord at this portion of the week. Uh, I know God has been great to us. God has been awesome. Uh, I'm glad we got off on Motivation on Monday. I pray that you got off on, on, on a good note. You know, got started, got a fast start to the week because I believe, like we said, we're crushing uh, the old narratives of Mondays being slow and gloomy. We're going to we're going to get fired up uh, for these Mondays because, you know, it gives us momentum going into the week. And here we are on Thursday to refresh again uh, with the word of God, refresh again with the presence of God in his word. And, and I just love this format because, you know, we're, we're getting the word. We're engaging in the word together. I'll be virtually, uh, you know, several times during the week. And it, it makes it. It makes it better on Sundays, I think. Amen. You can uh, leave leave your uh, response to it. Give me a thumbs up. Give me uh, yes. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna do it uh, like we do it in our in our Zoom meetings uh, with symmetry. If 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 this format is a blessing to you, I want you to to put a one in the comments, or I want you to put a one in, instead of the uh, hallelujah hands or the hallelujah hands and a one. Because I need, I need, I want to see, you know, if, if if this format is working. I want to see if it's affecting us positively. So, if this format is working for you, where we can um, delve into the word, not only on Sundays but you know a couple of times during the week, it's helping me. It's blessing me. So I'm gonna just go ahead and tell you uh, that I'm a one. I'm a one. It works for me, and I pray that it works for you. We have been talking a lot about uh, sin, shining the light on sin, sin of omission, sin of commission. We've been talking a lot about these things because I want us to realize how important uh, the resurrection was. I want, us, I want us to realize how important it was uh, for Jesus Christ to die on the cross, shed his innocent blood uh, for the remission of our sins. I want us to realize how important it was when he was uh, wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, when the chastisement of our peace was upon him and how with his stripes we are healed. I want to I want I want to shine in or zone in rather on the significance of the death of Christ. And, and to me, I think a great way uh, to, to zone in on the significance of his death is to see why it's, why it's so important to us. Why, why is it so important to me that Jesus Christ died on the cross? Because if he had not shed his blood, there would be no remission of sins. That means that we would, we would as, as we're going to see in the scriptures here, that means that we would be you know, bound by the law. And before I go to Romans 10 and 9, this is the uh, plan, of salva uh, plan of salvation that I have asked the members at Assembly Chapel to memorize, to get into your spirit, because when the time comes and you need to lead somebody to Christ, you need to be prepared. Amen. Uh, I've asked several times. If you haven't done it yet, please do so. If you have to write it 10 times, if you have to uh, read it every day. That's a great way to learn. That's a great way to memorize. That's a great way to get something in your mind. Write it and read it several times every day. Uh, that's probably how I learned it back at the uh, the church that I was coming from uh, when I when I learned about the plan of salvation. There's other plans of salvation in the Bible, but I think that if if we were you know just be with one accord, I think it would be it would work out better. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verses number nine through 13, and I'm reading from the Enduring Word translation that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto salvation, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Wait. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, excuse me, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame for there is no distinction between jew nor greek for the same lord over all is rich to all who call upon him for whosoever calls on the name of the lord 
shall be saved. And so we have been dealing with sin. We have been dealing with our shortcomings. We know that we all sin and come short of God's glory. We know that if a man says in his heart that he sins not, that he is a liar and the truth is not in him, because if he says he doesn't sin, he's basically saying that he does not need Jesus Christ. He does not need the work that was done on the cross at Calvary. He does not need uh, his, his transgressions or, or the handwriting of ordinances that was contrary to him. He didn't need them blotted on the cross. He didn't need God to wipe his slate clean. He's just saying that he, don't, he doesn't need these things if a man says in his heart that he does not sin. If a man believes that he is without sin, then he does not believe in the work that Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross. And so that's, that's a perspective uh, and a way to look at it uh, for anyone who thinks that, that they are um, beyond what the Bible says we are. And so we all sin, we all come short of his glory. So now what do we do? I think it's very important to shine the light on this so that we can, we can really have, um, we'll know the significance of Jesus Christ dying on the cross and what, it, what he did for me. You know, make this as personal uh, coming up on, on, on Resurrection Sunday. Make this as personal as you can possibly make it, because everything you read in the Bible, you have to remember uh, concerning Jesus Christ, him being crucified. You have to remember that he did all of this for me. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes. I am spiritually healed with his stripes. I am I am no longer a uh, sin sickened with his stripes. I am healed. So make it make it make it very personal uh, as we approach this resurrection Sunday. Make it very personal uh, when you participate the things that you are participating in rather during Lent season. Make it personal between you and God. And then on Resurrection Sunday, uh, your own personal celebration mixed with everybody else's celebrations and what God has done for them and what Jesus Christ means to them. That's going to give Resurrection Sunday a more meaningful. It's going to it's going to have a different meaning in our service when we really, really, really appreciate what Jesus Christ done for us. When we really when we really have a knowledge and an understanding of what Christ did for us when he died on the cross and when Jesus raised him from the dead. We need to realize that when Jesus raised him from the dead, that he raised him with all power. And if Jesus Christ abides in us, then we also have that power. And so I was looking at this and, and, and I was thinking to myself, there's no way that I can condense this uh, lesson in, into a 15 minute block. And so I'm just going to hit some high notes from what I was studying and I'm going to continue to study through the weekend. And, and unless God changes something, um, unless God wants me to go in another direction, you know, I'm, I'm praying that I will be able to go back to this on Sunday, Romans 10, 9, 13, 9 through 13, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13 on Sunday. I would love to finish this in sermonic form on Sunday morning. But this is this was the gist of what I want to speak on today during this this few minutes of devotional because uh, and, and some of these things will be repeated on Sunday. Uh, I don't I don't see any way around it. But but the whole thing is about the Israelites refusing to submit to God's righteousness, the Israelites refusing to submit to God's righteousness. And the problem is, uh, as, as it is now, a lot of us serve our own righteousness. A lot of us go by what we want to believe and not what is actually true. We go by what we want to believe because what we want to believe does not require as much from us as the truth does. Amen. What we want to believe, what we choose to believe does not require as, as much of us than the truth does. Amen. The Bible teaches us that too much is given much is required. Jesus Christ gave his entire life for us. And so for us to follow him, for us to reap the benefits, much is required of us. You're not at liberty 
to make up your own gospel. You're not at liberty to to make up your own you know, rules of righteousness. And one thing that I thought was particularly interesting in this text was that um, the, the, the Jews and the Gentiles had this, this, this ideology, as we'll see here in the scriptures, and I'll talk about it uh, probably at, at a little more depth on Sunday, but the Jews and the Gentiles, they had this ideology that because of where they were from and because of who they belonged to, and because of, of what they were taught, that they were closer to salvation than other people. And what I want to say uh, as, as a rebuttal is that it doesn't matter what, what family you came from. It doesn't matter if your grandparents were preachers. It doesn't matter if your daddy was a deacon and, and your mother uh, was, a, was a deaconess. All of these things doesn't matter when it comes to you and your salvation. You, you and your salvation, your salvation your salvation comes down to you and God and you and God alone. That's where your salvation comes down to. You can't, you can't be saved by association. Amen. You cannot be saved by association. And so the Bible says in, in verses, it's a number, well, you know, I'm going to just talk about 9 through 13 and, and I'll go back over verses 1, uh, cover verses 1 through 13 on Sunday morning. But the Bible says here, that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The idea in the Greek, the idea of, of confess with your mouth is to agree with. And so, and I'll go over this again on Sunday as well. And so when you confess with your mouth, you're saying that I agree with. So what are you agreeing with? You're agreeing with the word of God. You're agreeing that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. You're agreeing that the Word became flesh. You're agreeing that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You're believing everything that the Bible says. You believe that the Bible is the infallible truth. Amen. How is that when the Old Testament was about other things? We'll get to that as well, because the Old Testament is actually prophesying Jesus Christ. Everything in the Bible leads to Jesus Christ. Everything in the Bible leads to Jesus Christ. And so when you confess with your mouth, you're not just calling the name of Jesus. There are benefits in calling the name of Jesus. But when you confess with your mouth, you are saying, I agree with the word of God. I believe that God did what he said he did. I believe God is who he said he is. I believe that Jesus Christ is, is, is God incarnate, meaning he wrapped in flesh. I believe everything the Bible says, even though my mind can't conceive it, because I read some things in the Bible, trust me, if anybody want to tell the truth about it, I read some things in the Bible that I'm like, I just can't understand that. I just can't see how that happened. But it's the faith that I have in God and in his word that I know that, you know, sooner or later, by and by, you know, the understanding will, 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 will manifest itself. Amen. Revelation knowledge will come to me. And, and a lot of times it has nothing to do with, with what I'm trying to figure out. It's just the power of God's word that works in our life. This is a living word. Amen. And so you may not understand it. Keep reading your Bibles. Don't get discouraged. You may not understand it at that time. But later on, when life happens or a situation comes up, God will bring it back to your to your remembrance. It's planted in your subconscious mind and God will bring it back to your remembrance. So you confess with your mouth. But not only is, is that that knowledge good enough, there's got to be faith along with your knowledge. And that's what believing in your heart means for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made. And so with my mouth, I am saying that I am in agreement with what the Bible says. And by my faith, like I said, in the times where I don't under, I don't understand what I'm reading, but my faith is telling me that it's, 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 it's in fact true. My faith is telling me that God's word is, is, is not a lie. And so this is where I'm believing in my heart, you know, that, that God raised him from the dead. I wasn't there. You wasn't there. No one here was there. No one listening was there. But it's by faith that I choose to believe it. It's by faith that I choose to believe it. We talked about co um, cognitive dissonance the other day. And sometimes, you know, thoughts of doubt comes in my mind. Thoughts of doubt comes in my mind. The enemy is busy. The enemy is working. And the mind uh, is the battlefield. 
and thoughts will come up in my mind. And and but instead of listening to it, once you once you apply your faith, attach your faith to God's word, once you hear something that's 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 um, not not in accordance to what you study, what you read, what you believe, then 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 there's that that internal conflict that we talked about Sunday going on. But you see, when your spirit is stronger than your flesh, when these internal conflicts happen, then your 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 spirit will prevail and you'll end up walking after the spirit and not after the flesh. And so I'm going to close there and I want to come back to this on Sunday because there's a lot. I mean, a lot of, of, of information that I want to to talk about in this uh, topic as we go into Holy Week um, on next week. And so I want to go back to Romans 10 and 9 uh, on Sunday. Please come out to church. Please bring somebody with you to church. It's going to be a good one. It's some good information uh, that I have concerning these scriptures. That's that's more than just saying the name of Jesus and saying uh, that you believe. Amen. So join us on Sunday, 5453 Cascade Road, Cascade, Virginia. Lord God in heaven, thank you for this devotional. Thank you, Lord God, for the power of heaven and the unction of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, bless your word to fall on good soil. Bless your word to land. Lord God, in, in ears of the people who want to change, want to do better, want to be better. Heavenly Father, we thank you for forgiving us of our sins, Lord God. Give us hearts to help us, Lord God, to have hearts to repent, Heavenly Father. We love you, and I am excited about this resurrection and Easter season, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God's will, we'll see you on Sunday morning.